Welcome to our Season 1 recap of Game of Thrones, Part 2, Places to Go, People to Kill. Two new places crop up in our story as Season 1 continues, Bias Dothrak and the Eyrie. Bias Dothrak is the only city of the Dothraki people, located near the far northeastern edge of the Dothraki Sea, a sea that is actually a vast inland region of the continent of Essos, east of the Free Cities. The Eyrie is the seat of House Arryn, an ancient castle located in the Vale of Arryn, somewhere between King's Landing and Winterfell, on the east coast of Westeros, and notoriously difficult to attack. In part one of our season one recap, in the beginning, we last saw Bran falling from the highest tower in Winterfell. The good news is, he survived! Yay! The bad news? He's kinda in a coma. Tyrion relays the news to his siblings, who take it in stride. Queen Cersei pays her respects to the ailing boy and his mother, recounting a surprising tale of her own past sadness. Her firstborn son, barely more than a bundle with a patch of black hair who died of a fever. Soon thereafter, the party in Winterfell breaks up, and people set out on their various journeys. The king and his court head back down south to King's Landing, with Ned Stark and his two daughters in tow. As they part, Ned promises Jon that when they see each other next, he will tell Jon about his mother. Collectively, we, the audience, hold back a sob. Jon Snow heads for Castle Black with Benjen Stark, determined to become part of the Night's Watch. Tyrion, taking advantage of how far north he already is, joins them, so he can experience the fabled wall for himself. The trip north is uneventful, with Tyrion and Jon spending ample time talking and sharing wisdom, and Jon realizing that the noble Night's Watchmen and initiates may not be as noble as they once were. There's more criminals atoning for sins than fighters defending the realm from the terrors in the north. No worries, though. Jon makes friends in no time. Luckily, Tyrion is there to save the day, offering unique insights into the backgrounds of the new recruits. Out of all of them, Jon is the only one who'd been lucky to be raised with fight training, not to mention provided with food and shelter and a welcoming family all his life, Lady Stark notwithstanding. So instead of shunning them as inferior to himself, simply because they did not meet his expectations, Jon understands that he must help the new recruits and when he uses his powers for good, he begins to inspire loyalty and friendship amongst the others. He even stands up against Alistair Thorne, the master at arms at Castle Black, by protecting and befriending Samuel Tarly, who's pretty bad at fighting, but intelligent and adept at book learning. Meanwhile, on the journey south to King's Landing, things go from good to bad, as Prince Joffrey shows his true colors. Sansa and Joffrey, now betrothed to each other, enjoy a walk when they come across Arya practicing swordplay with the butcher's boy. Claiming the boy hit Arya, Joffrey tries to hurt him. When Arya defends him and Joffrey turns on her with his sword, Arya's direwolf, Nymeria, comes to her rescue and bites Joffrey. This, of course, leads to a rather tense situation between Robert and Ned as Cersei insists the girl must be punished. She settles for the direwolf to die instead, but as Nymeria is nowhere to be found, because Arya saved her by sending her away, Sansa's direwolf, Lady, is sacrificed instead. By the time they reach King's Landing, Arya has begun to make a list of swords. When Ned finds out that Arya is in possession of a sword, a gift from Jon before she left Winterfell, he hires Sirio Forel, a famed sword fighter from the free city of Braavos, to teach her how to use it, and more than that, how to fight in the Bravasi style, nimbly and gracefully. Across the Narrow Sea, Daenerys is also learning something new. Khal Drogo is taking his Kalisar from Pentos across the Dothraki Sea to the city of Vyas Dothrak, the city of the Horse Lords. But the travel proves to be harsh on the gentle Daenerys, at first. As she spends more time among her new people, she gets stronger, not only physically, but also emotionally and mentally. Her brother had quite a manipulative hold on her prior to the wedding, but as Khaleesi, her confidence in herself builds. Daenerys also finds her champions among her bodyguards, officially Rakaro, and unofficially Ser Jorah. 
and at Daenerys's request, her handmaiden Doria teaches her how to use her sexuality to get on a more equal footing with her husband. And Danny does just that. An unlikely romance blossoms between her and Khal Drogo, and by the time they reach Via Stothrak, Daenerys is pregnant. And to celebrate, she had to eat a raw horse's heart in front of everyone. <laughs> totally, totally normal for Dothraki. Viserys is jealous and desperate for the same love that Dothraki show his sister. He makes an ill-advised final attempt to get Khal Drogo to obey him. He threatens the life of his unborn nephew. Khal Drogo promises him he will give him a crown, a golden crown, and even sooner than Viserys expected. He melts a gold belt and voila! Her brother's death leaves Daenerys unfazed. She'd already started to see through his manipulation and realized he was not the man she'd once idolized. And as one falls in Essos, another wakes in Westeros. Thanks for watching Game of Thrones Season 1 Recap Part 2, Places to Go, People to Kill. Join us next time for the third part, Secrets and Lies. Next up on 7 Minute Seasons, a Mind Mind TV series. Love what you saw? Make sure to like, share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe for more great content like this. Mm -hmm.